Public Travel is pleased to be bringing you this webinar today, The Birders and Columbia, Connecting the Film to Community and Conservation, with guests Chris Bell and Diego Ochoa. The Birders is an award-winning documentary film series about Colombian bird diversity. With over 1 million views and a record-breaking 30 plus million social media likes and shares, the films have changed the perception of Colombia and established the country as one of the one as the number one birding destination on the planet. Together with the work of National Audubon Society and Pro Colombia, Colombia's reputation as a top birding destination continues to grow and extend to the local community. Audubon's extensive guide training and community education, along with new birding routes, has opened eyes to the wealth of biodiversity. Colombia became the first country to record a landmark 1900 bird species and holds 10% of the planet's total biodiversity. During the presentation today, our speakers will share the story behind the film series and the ongoing work to support sustainable tourism. Chris Bell from Where Next, the film's production, co production company, will talk a little bit about the film and its origins. Then we'll hear from Diego Ochoa from Audubon Colombia, who will talk about Audubon's work in the country with conservation, guide training, and community education. We'll hear briefly from Debbie Jordan from Holbrook Travel, who's played a key role working with Audubon in developing birding travel programs in conjunction with Audubon's International Alliances program. And then we'll open it up for Q&A. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to share those in the chat window. Chris Bell is content manager for Where Next, the Colombian production company responsible for the film series. Chris first moved to Colombia in 2011 and except for a year uh, back in his native England to complete his master's degree in Latin American cultural studies from the University of Manchester, he's been in Colombia ever since. Before that, he lived in Venezuela for a year and spent six months traveling around South America when he was 19. Chris's travels through Colombia led to a job as the editor-in-chief of the Colombia Travel Blog. During his time as editor, he tripled readership and turned it into the country's most widely read English language travel resource. He also spent a year as the Columbia expert for Culture Trip, contributed to the World Nomad's Insider's Guide to Columbia, and designed ecotourism routes for national tour companies. His expertise on Columbia has seen him featured on CNN's documentary, My Columbia, and in national publications, Semana, El Espectador, and El Tiempo. At Where Next, he heads up native storytelling initiatives and works on brand strategy. When he's not in the office, you can usually find him out in the wilds of Columbia, indulging in his passion for birding. During his travels to all 32 of Columbia's departments, he's observed 1,250 bird species and counting. We're also joined today by Diego Ochoa. Diego is a senior consultant on biodiversity, communications, and nature-based tourism. He currently supports Audubon in Colombia through institutional relationships with public and private stakeholders in the country, as well as technical backstopping of bird-based tourism projects. He is author and editor of several publications, including Birdwatching Guide of Bogota, the Birdwatching Better Practices Guide of Colombia, and Hummingbirds of Cundinamarca. He lives in La Calera, a small town near the capital of Bogota. Lastly, Debbie Jordan has been part of the Holbrook team for over 45, excuse me, 25 years, <laughs> and spent many years as a specialty travel consultant, planning and developing birding and natural history programs. She more recently transitioned into a new role as Holbrook ambassador. Debbie's passion for travel, nature, and boating have led her to all 50 U.S. states and more than 35 countries around the world, including a sailing trip from California to Florida and spending time in Costa Rica, Panama, and the Galapagos. She's pas passionate about conservation and spends her free time volunteering in the Lower Sewanee National Wildlife Refuge near her home in Florida. Uh, so with that, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to Chris Bell. Chris, welcome, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. Um, so I'm going to go right ahead and share my screen here so that everybody can see um, some. Can everybody see that? Am I, am I showing yes, that? Okay? Fantastic. Okay, brilliant. So, um, well, as Lindsay already mentioned, uh, I am going to be speaking to everybody today a little bit about a film uh, project called The Birders and about uh, the experience of bird watching and ecotourism in Colombia. So um, just to give a little bit of context to start off with, um, a lot of people may have already heard that Colombia is the country with the most species of bird in the world, but um, I'd like to just give a little bit of context to that and, and some examples of those numbers. Um, so Colombia, as we've already heard, has more than 1900 species of bird, uh, of which about 83 are endemic. Um, 
It has around 168 species of hummingbird, which is almost half of the species of hummingbird on Earth, a quite staggering number of hummingbird species. Uh, and that number 1900 plus almost 2000 corresponds to about 20% of all bird species on Earth. Uh, if you see on the right hand side of the slide, you can see a list from eBird of the top 14 Colombian departments for bird diversity a department is, is like a state. Um, and if you look at that list, you can see that in the top five departments, Cauca, Meta, Antioquia, Valle del Cauca and Putumayo, over a thousand species registered in each of those. Meaning that if any of those were countries, on their own, they would be in the top 20 most bird diverse countries in the world. If the number one department, Cauca, declared its independence tomorrow and became a separate country, it would take its place in the top 10 most bird diverse countries on earth. And that's maybe the 13th biggest department in the country. So why is it that Colombia is so bird diverse? A lot of people have heard that number and that statistic, but don't really necessarily understand why. The main reason is that Colombia is the only country on earth to combine five outstanding eco regions. So we see here on this map the Caribbean coast, the Pacific coast, the Andes mountains, the Amazon rainforest, and the grassland plains of Orinoquia, known in Colombia as, as the Llanos, the plains. Um, you can see here on the map uh, the orange uh, segment at the top, the Caribbean coast, illustrated by the American flamingos, the uh, thin green strip on the west side, the Pacific coast with the red cap mannequin there. The vast green swathe at the bottom, uh, about 33% of the country, in fact, the Amazon rainforest, illustrated there by the, the trogon. Um, the large kind of gray strip running up through the, the length of the country, the Andes Mountains, uh, illustrated there by the little Inca hummingbird at its nest. Uh, and actually another fact is that the Andes splits into three distinct ranges uh, within Colombia, which is another cause for the diversity of birds and wildlife that Colombia exhibits. Um, and then the final section is the, the reddish section on the right hand side, which is the seasonally flooded plains, uh, the grasslands of Orinoquia region, uh, illustrated by the Orinoco goose. Um, I have a short video just to show some of these landscapes. <laughs> So all of that footage uh, comes from a film, a series of films uh, called The Birders. Uh, the Birders um, is, well, beyond simply being five documentary films about birding in Colombia, which is, is, is what it is, is a campaign designed to position Colombia as the number one bird watching country on earth. It's the country with the most bird species on earth, but perhaps prior to the last handful of years, it hasn't really been known as a, as a tourist destination. Um, the Birders was produced by Where Next, the production company I work for, alongside uh, Pro Colombia, the Colombian uh, Tourism Ministry. And um, we filmed uh, five separate documentaries, one feature length documentary and four shorter regional documentaries designed to capture the diversity of the five eco regions that I mentioned previously. So the principal film, The Birders, A Melodic Journey Through Northern Colombia, the poster of which you can see here. Uh, is a feature length film that was shot on the Northern Columbia Birding Trail. Uh, now, Diego, the second speaker today, is going to talk in more depth about the birding trails, which are an Audubon initiative. But what the Audubon uh, Society essentially did was collect together different routes uh, of reserves, natural areas, bird diverse regions in different regions of Colombia and create these birding trails. And the Northern Columbia Birding Trail. Uh, we chose as the star, as it were, of our main film because it's the only region that combines three globally outstanding eco-regions, the coastal deserts of the Guajira Peninsula, uh, the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta Mountains, which is the highest coastal mountain range on Earth, and the Perija Mountains, which are the northernmost extension of the tropical Andes. So this film uh, starred um, Keith Ladzinski, who you can see there on the left, uh, National Geographic videographer and photographer and the Colombian birding guide and biologist Diego Calderon, one of the top bird guides and birders in Colombia. You can see them here uh, filming American flamingos in La Guajira, getting uh, 
kind of a little bit wet in the mission to get the good images, but uh, that's how these kind of films have to work. Um, so I'm going to show a little bit of footage of uh, the birds from the film. Okay, so that's uh, just a very short segment because during the course of those films, the five films that we made, we filmed well over 200 species of birds within the five different ecoregions of Colombia. So that little video is just a snapshot of, of some of the footage you can see of birds if you watch the, uh, the five films. So speaking of those five different videos, um, the regional chapters were shot in the Pacific region. This one here, the bird is a photographer's view of Colombia's Pacific coast which was filmed at uh, El Cantil Eco Lodge uh, on the Choco Pacific coast of Colombia. Um, we filmed species there, for example, uh, such as this sooty-capped puffbird, which is a very endangered and endemic species that can only be seen on the Pacific coast of Colombia and a little segment in the Caribbean. Uh, we also filmed in the Colombian Amazon region in the small uh, city of Mitu in the heart of the Colombian Amazon region. The bird is a feathered adventure in the Colombian Amazon. Uh, where, well, anybody who's birded or shot video in the Amazon region knows that it's an extremely difficult place to film lots of species that exist in the very low leaf litter areas, very enclosed canopy, very little light. But we managed to film really fantastic footage of species such as this Guian and Cock of the Rock. We also filmed in the Andes, in the Western Colombian Andes, at Montezuma Lodge in Tatama National Park, uh, a family's nest in the Colombian Andes where we filmed species such as this Goldring tanager, which is one of the most sought after species by birders visiting Colombia, an endemic and extremely range restricted species that can only be seen in a small segment of the Western Andes, but is gratifyingly common and easy to film at Montezuma. And the final chapter was filmed in the grasslands of Colombia's Orinoquia region, the Eastern Plains of the country. Um, and this was filmed at Hato La Aurora, which is a kind of vast private, um, almost safari lodge uh, in the heart of the plains where we filmed a variety of species. The, the Amos is particularly famous for these huge congregations of ducks, geese, herons, species like that. But one bird that's particularly of interest to birders is this pale-headed jacamar, which is, although not endemic to Colombia, it's endemic to the Llanos region, meaning that it can only be found in the plains which are shared between Colombia and Venezuela. So, what I also want to talk about beyond uh, the birders in terms of uh, the birds is the fact that the film and the campaign in general was designed to promote Colombia as a destination for birders. But as we all know, if anybody hears a birder, birders come in all, in, all, in all types. There are the most hardcore, the most dedicated birders who want to spend all of their time from dusk till dawn out in the field trying to spot every species of bird and then go out at night looking for owls. But then you also have the birders who want to experience a little bit of everything. Colombia is a country with a great deal of cultural diversity, natural diversity, uh, beyond just birds. So within the film, we also wanted to showcase a slice of that culture to give people even more reasons to be excited about visiting Colombia. So I'm just going to show you a very short video showing off some of that culture. Okay, and you could probably see watching that video that there's a lot of um, music that features in the birders. And one thing we were particularly keen to do um, when we made this film was to connect um, the birding aspect of the film with the cultural aspect. And the best way that we saw fit to do that was through music. Uh, Colombia 
Alongside its campaign to position itself as one of the top birding destinations in the country, Colombia is also uh, a country known as the land of a thousand rhythms. In fact, there's 1,025 folk music rhythms that have been identified in Colombia. Um, and we were keen to connect those two things together because actually a lot of the music is inspired by bird song and, uh, and the movements of birds and the cultural connections that regional communities have with birds. So to take the film beyond um, a simple bird documentary, we also commissioned five up and coming and underground musical artists from Colombia to create an original soundtrack to the film, which, which soundtracks the film, all five of the films throughout as you watch. Um, and we have musicians such as you see in the top left there, an Arhuaco musician and indigenous community from the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta Mountains playing the typical gaita flute, the musician to his right playing the same instrument. as a guy uh, called Teto Ocampo, who's one of Colombia's top uh, musical anthropologists who records under the name Mucho Indio. Uh, on the far right hand side at the top, you see um, traditional dances of the Waidu indigenous people of the Guajira Peninsula, that dance is inspired by the bird of a million cardinal. Um, and the other photos on the bottom, you can see artists who contributed songs to the soundtrack, uh, working on those songs in the studio, and actually on the bottom right, recording bird song in La Guajira in the field to incorporate it into the, into the soundtrack. The soundtrack, The Bird is the original motion picture, is available on, uh, on Spotify, you can see there, uh, five different tracks by five um, Colombian artists. Uh, and what is also exciting about that, I think, as well, on a side note from the birders, is that to be able to connect some of genuinely the most uh, popular, cool, underground musical artists in Colombia working today and have them soundtrack a film about birding really highlights one of the things that we wanted to show off in the film as well, which is that the Colombian birding culture is actually quite different to some other birding cultures. It's extremely young and vibrant and diverse. Uh, as Colombians are starting to be able to discover the potential for adventure and exploration in their own country. It's important to remember that Colombia, not just for international tourists, but for Colombians as well, has only really become you know, much more accessible over the last handful of years. So this is a movement, the Colombian birding movement, of local people connecting with international visitors and exploring their country together, which is kind of an exciting thing. And it's one of the things that comes across, I think, very well in the film or something that we were trying to, uh, to bring through in the film. Um, and I just want to move away slightly from specific birding tourism towards the ways that birding tourism can be connected with different experiences, different cultural and biological experiences that people can have when they come to Colombia. So these are some photos taken over the course of personal birding trips in Colombia to just illustrate the way that a, a birding visit to Colombia doesn't have to be that kind of dawn to dusk, 14 days, hardcore birding experience. Uh, the guy on the left hand side, one of Colombia's most um, culturally uh, significant coastal music artist, Rafael Cassiani. I visited him at his home in the small town of San Basilio de Palenque after a morning spent birding the swamps to the south of Cartagena, seeing rare species like the Northern Screamer. Uh, the top right hand side, Barichara, known as the most beautiful village in Colombia. That spectacular little town is about 10 blocks squared, all of them looking as postcard perfect as that. But in the morning, I'd been out birding, seeing very endangered and endemic species like the chestnut-bellied hummingbird and Nicephoros wren, for example. Coffee farming, something that you find all over Colombia, particularly in the UNESCO World Heritage coffee region. And again, that photo was taken of a local coffee farmer after a morning spent birding the shade coffee plantations, seeing species like tanagers and warblers. Um, so it's really just to illustrate that actually Birding is a wonderful way to explore different regions of Colombia, but also connect with culture, with music, with landscapes, with um, beautiful towns, even gastronomy. A city like Bogota and Cali, a lot of people think that if you come birding in Colombia that you have to go off into the wild, into the middle of the jungle, up a mountain somewhere to be able to see amazing birds. In fact, these cities, the biggest cities in Colombia, are all located within an hour of some of the top birding regions in the country. You could quite easily connect an urban exploration of Colombia with some of the best birding you'll experience. Bogota alone has a bird list in the urban area of around 500 species. Cali's metropolitan area, 600 plus. So these are cities within Colombia that have a bird list larger than a lot of countries. Another thing a lot of people don't realize about Colombia is that it's far from just being the most bird diverse country in the world, it's actually the second most biodiverse country in the world. More than 10% of all the world's species of everything exist. Colombia. 
Colombia has the most orchid species of any country in the world. It's number two in plants, amphibians, butterflies, freshwater fish, number three in palm trees and reptiles. And what a lot of people don't realize is Colombia is actually number four for mammal biodiversity. So for example, all of these photos were taken around the same area where we filmed the Janus, the Orinoquia chapter of the bird. Um, the giant ante from the top left, the giant otters at the bottom left, and the tamandua uh, on the right. All of these photos were taken during the course of a day of bird watching. Um, the two photos on the left, for example, I took both of those on a day exploring the plains with my parents and we registered about 120 species of bird on a fairly gentle birding day and also these wonderful mammal species. Uh, you can see here again, if you spend time on the Pacific coast, you can combine your birding trips with whale watching between June and October. The Colombian Pacific coast hosts huge populations of migrating humpback whales. Uh, when you go out at night looking for owls, you can throw in some experience herping, looking at frogs. Uh, and when you're birding first thing in the morning, all over Colombia, you're usually joined, uh, joined by a, a dawn chorus of howler monkeys. Um, I, I, I mention all this stuff really just to highlight the tremendous potential Colombia has for tourism in, in, all, in all different senses. But the fact that the bird tourism doesn't just have to be limited to the more hardcore, the more, um, some might say extreme birders, I have to confess I'm one of those, but the people who want to be out in the field from dusk till dawn. Um, I'm gonna show you one more video here because the last aspect of the birders that I really wanna highlight is the human aspect of the story. Um, sorry, it's telling me this video can't be loaded here. Let's try this again. Okay, here we go. Sorry about this. Here we go. Okay, so I, I show that video because something I always say about the film when people talk to me about the birders is that there's a reason why the film is called The Birders and it's not called The Birds. Because at the end of the day, while this is a film promoting the bird diversity of Colombia, what it's really doing is telling human stories. It's telling human stories through this joy of birding that connects all of us. And a great example of that is Where Next itself. You can see here this beautiful drawing by Guariskin, the Venezuelan artist. Uh, illustrating the field team that made the film The Birders. Uh, it's a mixture of, of uh, Colombians and international videographers, producers, directors. The funny thing is that Where Next, as an agency, uh, myself aside, was a company that had zero interest in birds prior to making this film. And Greg, uh, our founder, the, the tallest guy in the image there, uh, had to drag, practically drag, a few of our videographers out into the field to do scouting trips to look at birds. They're all cyclists and rock climbers. They all wanted to be out doing extreme activities and bird watching sounded like something that didn't appeal to them that much. Fast forward a few years later, having made the film, every single person in that office is a passionate, dedicated, hardcore birder who now bug me, the office birder, to go out on weekends and share that experience with them. Um, and it's something that I think is a common thread throughout the film. If you look at uh, this image here, you see a series of the human stars of the birders. These are people from all walks of life who've had their lives changed by birding, whether it's economically, professionally, spiritually, uh, creatively, in the case of the musicians. Every single person here has had their life changed by birds and bird watching. And that's where what I want to talk about connects with what Diego uh, from Audubon is going to talk about now, is that the power of bird watching not only as a way to inspire Colombians to explore their own country, but also as a way of offering people alternatives and economic hope in regions that perhaps don't have as much uh, options. For example, you can see in the top right hand corner, the guy using the binoculars, Jose Luis Puchaina, a Wayu indigenous bird guide from the Guajira deserts of Northern Colombia who features heavily in the uh, feature length film. Diego is gonna talk more about him in his talk, but he's a great example 
of a local person with an interest in birds for whom projects like Audubon's Northern Columbia Birding Trail and then films like The Birders have been able to bring him an entirely new source of income and passion and a way to change his life. And that's the case for a lot of the people you see pictured here and for many of the people uh, who starred in The Birders and who, um, and who Audubon have trained. I just want to finish off by talking a little bit about um, Columbia as a birding destination. And that's the beauty of the film, I think, of The Birders, is that what a lot of people don't realize about this film is that it was filmed almost in real time, as it were. It was filmed in the amount of time that most people actually visit the destinations where the film is set. If you look at world famous nature documentaries, sort of Planet Earth, BBC style documentaries, they're undeniably spectacular in terms of the footage. But these things are filmed over six months, 12 months, two years to get the footage of the wildlife that they are able to attain. The Birders Northern Columbia Birding Trail feature film was filmed over 18 days in five locations on the Northern Columbia Birding Trail. And the four regional chapters were each filmed in just three days. These are pretty much exact imitations of the amount of time that you as a tourist or a traveler to Columbia will spend in those amounts of time. So the point being that it's really quite possible to come to Columbia, visit these places, and live the exact experience that's on the screen in the birders. And I think that's one of the things that's behind the film's appeal is that at the end of the day, it's, it's a road trip movie through Colombia that accurately tells the story of what it's like to bird in this country, um, which I think is one of the reasons why it's connected with so many people internationally and within the country, is that you could come to Colombia and you could live the birders for yourself and actually go birding with the exact people who star in the film, see the birds doing the exact same thing that they're there on the screen doing. Um, on that note, while you can't come to Columbia at the moment, unfortunately, we hope to welcome you here soon, one thing you can do is you can bird the birders film. So I just want to finish with this quickly. If you go to the link at the bottom of the page there, wherenext.com forward slash birders, we've prepared a series of interactive downloadable checklists featuring every single bird in all five films so that you can live a little bit of the experience of what it's like to bird in Colombia while you're stuck at home before you can come and visit us in the future. Uh, thank you everyone for listening. I'm going to hand over to Diego Ochoa from Audubon, who's going to talk a little bit more about this subject. Thank you. Gracias, uh, Chris. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to see, to see the birders. So I'm going to share my screen now. And I would like to start then. Thank you, Chris. It's a pleasure to be here today to show some of the, of the, of the work that Audubon is doing in Colombia and, and show my country, you know, the birdiest country in the world. So as Chris, as Chris mentioned it, uh, Colombia has more bird species than any other country in the world. Around 20% of all the all of the species currently living on Earth. So we have around 2,000 species with more than 80 endemics. We share with uh, North America at least 170 species of migratory birds that spend 50% uh, of their life cycle here in Colombia. So my country is the, nat the natural bridge uh, to connect Pacific and Atlantic flyways through the south of South America. So you can see in the picture, a truly Colombian jewel, the turquoise dacnis. This is an, is an endemic species that lives just in the forest of the Cordillera Central and Cordillera Oriental here in Colombia. This is a resident bird that needs healthy Andean forest to thrive as the same forest as the migratory birds needs like the Zerulean warbler or the golden winged warbler or the Canada warbler use and need during the boreal migration. But how to ensure the conservation of these ecosystems in Colombia? So one of our answers was effectively uh, tourism. So in 2016, Audubon commissioned a market study with the Conservation Strategy Fund to determine the opportunity for Colombia in the global bird watching market. In that year, the peace agreement was signed, opening a great opportunity for the country to develop nature-based uh, tourism. 
how do one have experience uh, using bird-based tourism uh, to generate economic development in four countries in Latin America and the Caribbean? With more than 16 million US people traveling to watch birds, the country had an opportunity for sure. In this slide, uh, you can see some numbers uh, from the study that illustrates the case for Colombia in the bird watching tourism industry. I just want to highlight the, the $9 million in revenue number as it indicates uh, income through local communities, small business or local entrepreneurships. Uh, it could sound a small amount of money, well, of course not for me, but it means a lot of money for many people and it's key to build up local economies, economies based on nature as solution. In the picture, you can see participant of one of our trainings in Cauca department, one the, that department that Chris mentioned during the beginning of his presentation as one of these big biodiversity hotspots in the world. So they are from this region. So we teamed up first with USAID, the United States uh, uh, Cooperation Agency to build up the Northern Columbia Burden Trail, which is the inspiration for, for the birders documentary. And after, and after the development of this Burden Trail, we teamed up with the Vice Ministry of Tourism and Fontur, which is a governmental fund to support uh, tourism projects to create national burden trails that supports the country in becoming a top destination uh, for the you know for the bird watching tourism sector, the government uh, estimated that we had great opportunities as a country to be a competitive uh, actor into this uh, into this um, industry in Latin America. So, the government of Colombia trusted Alduan and invested more than 1.5 million dollars to create a network of burden trails that embraces. 13 departments, just uh, we use departments as you use US states. So we have 13 departments, our part, we have around, we have um, 28 departments. So we uh, covered at least uh, half of them and more than 100 localities that you can visit to, to watch birds around all these areas. Um, as today, Audubon has trained more than 400 people from, you know, birds anatomy to how to identify birds in the field to how to deal with tourists to bilingual and English language courses and training. So together, the birding trails cover around 1,500 1, birds and include around 2.5 million, 2.56, sorry, million uh, acres of protected areas, both private and public. Uh, just for an example, for local natural reserves, for instance, bird-based tourism is a great alternative uh, to generate extra incomes. So let me tell, uh, tell, tell us, uh, tell them um, a short story of Jose Luis Puchaina, the person um, that Chris mentioned it during his presentation. Jose Luis Puchaina is a Wayu a leader from the Wajú community. It's an indigenous community that live in the north part of Colombia. Um, if you can just uh, locate Colombia, we have a Caribbean area and then we have an extensive de desert in at the north part of Colombia. And Wajú community has been an indigenous and traditional community that have lived there uh, even before the, the arrival of the Spanish um, Empire in the um, in the 15th century so jose luis um, you know part of the community he has been uh, not just an excellent leader but also participated into the trainings that Audubon to put together to develop the project in in the northern colombia burden trail so he took this training those trainings are designed to improve the skills that they have in terms, in terms of guidance. So in addition to being an excellent YU community leader, Jose Luis is also a great um, knowledge of his native ancestral land. So he mixed all the 
traditional knowledge that he has uh, over his community and over his territory with all this technical knowledge that the training that Audubon did um, put into them into this area. So he knows now all the best corners of the territory to find the you know the rarest and most representative endemic species in the region. But also he has the skills in terms of guidance, in terms of of dealing with tourism, and in, in even in, in working uh, you know in managing and administrative things. So he founded uh, his own company. It's a local birding company. You can see. The, the logo of his company, the bird in Guajira. And now he offers and, uh, you know, itineraries and, and um, guidance in his territory and is doing business with other parts of the, of the value change of the tourism in Colombia. So he is doing business with uh, other uh, travel agencies, locally and regional. He's working with others um, on the on the tourism, he's receiving more training for the government, so he has changed his life, and he is one of these drivers to change uh, the community and the and the and the way that they are living. What you leader, um, sorry, what you indigenous are facing, um, you know, several problems and issues related, especially with uh, with with their livelihood. So they are just implementing tourism as part of those strategies to um, increase the revenues, to increase the incomes and have a very well-being. So he is located in Camarones um, and now act he is actively participating in the development of several uh, projects related to, you know, from protection of biodiversity to public awareness to plastic debris, um, you know, gathering. Uh, and stuff like that, and he is living close to the Flamenco Sanctuary, which is a public protected area in the north of Colombia, where his community is located. So this uh, birding trail and the you know the way that the, the tourism and clients are consuming this birding trail is injecting uh, incomes directly to the communities. As Jose Luis, we have 400 more stories like Jose Luis in these departments. And we are proving that the, the development of the birding trails are a great tool, not just for protection of biodiversity, but also to generate local incomes and fostering local economies. So uh, I just wanted to, to bring this uh, small example, but uh, the idea is to replicate these to other areas. And we are now participating with other local communities and other indigenous communities in other departments. So what is next? Um, well, so probably you already know the tourism has been one of those sectors heavily impacted here in Colombia. So I'm now uh, working with the government in, in thinking and, and putting uh, strategies and campaigns in order to stimulate the market. Um, these chats and these webinars are part of these actions that Audubon wants to push with uh, his partners and his, uh, its partners as Holbrook in order to put in front of, of uh, you know, of the audience the, the efforts that the government is doing and how these efforts are going to support, um, you know, the, the, the tourism sector in these rural areas. So now we are working with the government on this post-COVID strategy that includes, you know, biosafety processes and other things in the areas that are will be that will be uh, attending tourism and others related to lodge and food and things like that. So the second is to expand the Burden Trails Network. We, are, we already proved that this is a successful project that can be measured in terms of both conservation of biodiversity and birds and other uh, improving of livelihoods of people living in high biodiversity areas that with a lot of needs still to cover. And it is also to gather the lessons learned of this project to build up a technical uh, umbrella, uh, and, you know, a guide that uh, leads our partners in other countries in Latin America to develop similar projects and then have a network of area that are important for bird watching, but also are protected and, and are receiving 
resources and money to to fund the management and to fund the conservation to fund the, the work that we are doing at the local level so this will help Audubon and our project to expand the influence as an expert in the use of tourism as a nature-based solution for biodiversity conservation. Uh, now we are talking about birds, but Colombia is a mega diverse country with other biological groups that are for, uh, for interest. Colombia is number one, for instance, in name of orchids. It's number, it's number two in, in palms. Uh, so we have a great diversity that needs to be um, exploded and, and, and through this exploration, we can just conserve uh, this reach and this biodiversity. So this is all that I, I have today. I, I would like to, in, to invite every of you to, to take a look uh, of the birders uh, as this documentary captures all the things that we are uh, that I am mentioning now uh, there are a lot of parts that are condensed into the into the documentary so you can see uh, a great picture and a panorama of the project that we are developing and you know putting some baby steps uh, to protect the astonishing biodiversity in Latin America so thank you very much and I'm just going back to to Lindsay uh, the microphone is yours thank you Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, at this point, I will turn it over to Debbie and uh, Debbie just has a few words that she'd like to say as well. Hi Debbie, how are you? Hello, can you see me? Can you hear me? <laughs> yes and yes. <laughs> Great, well, uh, thank you guys so much. I am really, really privileged to um, to be on this webinar and I, the birders film, if you haven't seen it, you must, must see it. It's got incredible footage. The mannequins, all those mannequins are so amazing. And um, the drone shots and the music and everything about it is just top notch and really amazing. And I can't wait to try out the, um, the birding, the, the armchair birding uh, feature with wherenext.com slash birders. And by the way, Lindsay's gonna be sending out all of these links here um, after, the, after the program when she sends the, the recording. So um, since 2013, we've worked closely with National Audubon supporting bird-based tourism in the countries where they work. And um, most recently, Columbia has, has opened up and we actually started sending our first groups there um, back in, I think it was 2016 that we really started uh, the very first groups, but with the Audubon groups uh, in 2018. And since then, I um, had the great privilege of taking a group of our top leaders back in 2018 in November, we went down to explore the Central Andes. And during that time, we saw, we were only birding on the ground really for seven days, but we saw over 300 species of birds just in that short time. And um, many, many, many hummingbirds. If you like hummingbirds, Columbia is definitely the place to go. We saw one quarter of the species in the country. So that meant, that means we saw like over, it was like 42 species of hummingbirds. So very, very impressive on those numbers. Um, just wanted to also mention, you know, we're very anxious to get back in the field and um, we've postponed quite a few groups, uh, you know, since the pandemic, of course. And our intention is to, um, to you know, keep traveling down there in 21. I think that uh, we might still have a few hanging on or a couple hanging on for the end of this year. But um, if things don't change with getting a vaccine and, and um, you know, I think people are gonna feel more comfortable once, once we have the coronavirus under control. So I'm really anxious to go back there myself. And I really, I didn't get a chance to go to the um, Guajira Peninsula, which looks amazing. And I, um, I'm anxious to meet so, some more of the community members and um, continue our work there. So I wanted to make sure we have plenty of time to answer some questions here that came in. And um, these were ones that uh, actually came in the other day. So I'm going to read, um, do ruby-throated hummingbirds migrate to Columbia? And I think, um, Chris, are you the right one to ask that question of? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably the right person. 
to ask, I guess. Um, they, they don't really is the slightly unsatisfactory answer to that question. So Colombia, the, their migration doesn't make it that much further south than Central America. But Colombia has this unusual pair of islands called San Andres and Providencia, which are two small Caribbean islands, which are actually geographically far closer to Nicaragua than they are to Colombia, despite of being Colombian. Actually, it's a kind of little migration spot for Colombia. So for people who have lists for countries, San Andres during migration season is the place where you can bump your Colombia list up with uh, a bunch of migrant species that rarely make it as far south as Colombia. Ruby throated hummingbird, I actually, I was actually looking at this the other day. There are no e-bird records for it in Colombia at all. Uh, it does feature in Colombian bird guides listed as having been reported on San Andres. San Andres is also generally quite underbirded. Um, so I think probably such a tiny bird turning up for a couple of days in November during migration has probably been overlooked in the past. Um, they don't generally make it to Colombia, but there are, there are a few records. Country. That's that's very really interesting because I um, worked with Bill Hilton Jr. who organized 30 expeditions to band ruby-throated hummingbirds and primarily in Costa Rica. I think he believes that they go only as far south as um, as the Central Valley. Or, yeah, Central Valley in Costa Rica, but um, it's yeah, incredible. Would... They're so tiny those little birds and that they can fly yeah. all that way. And a lot of people don't know that those islands out in the Caribbean do belong to Colombia as well. So isn't Providencia is also belongs to Colombia, I think. Uh, San Andres and Providencia. Anyway, okay, well, thank you. And the next question here is, um, uh, what are the best months to go and when do we plan to start bird watching trips again? And um, at this point of time, I we are really looking towards probably, we generally like to plan our programs about a year out. So you know, I wouldn't want to try to organize something sooner than June of 2021, but I'm told that it is very reliant on where you go in Colombia. So, um, of course, the seasonality of the birds, too, also matters. But as far as weather, when, um, for the different regions, when is the right time to go, Chris or Diego? It's... Uh, it's as you said, it's quite tricky. Um, <laughs> Colombia being divided into these five regions that I mentioned in the film all have fairly distinct microclimates. Um, so traditionally in most parts of the Andes uh, and the Caribbean coast, it's drier between December and March sort of time. But that also corresponds with high season for tourism around December, January. The shoal seasons of November or March are a nice time to get kind of a balance between weather and number of people. Uh, the Janos Plains, the Eastern Plains, um, are flooded, huge, almost entirely flooded between April, May and November, uh, which makes for a spectacular landscape, but maybe slightly more difficult birding conditions. Uh, perhaps they're the best time to combine birding and mammal observation is the dry season, January, February. Um, Amazon. Well, the anteaters the were Amazon amazing, countries. by the so, way. Just wanted to mention the anteaters were incredible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're, Go ahead, they're amazing I'm sorry. Things to see. Almost two meters long, I think. No, no, no. It's, um, I was going to say as well that in the Amazon, that because it covers such a vast swath of Colombia, that actually the dry and wet season in the very south of the Colombian Amazon is different to the dry and wet season, a little bit different to the northern reaches of the Colombian Amazon. To be honest, I would say that you really have to look at the area you're interested in going to and check out what the weather's like in that area because even in some areas the wet season is the best time to see birds it might not be the most comfortable time to be dry but when the uh the, the fruiting trees have lots of berries on them and stuff like that during those seasons you often see far more birds so it depends great well thank you and um i am going to the questions that we have received here during the webinar and I am seeing where can we see these films, which they're all on YouTube, is my understanding. Is that correct? Yes. I'm okay. On YouTube. And as I said, we're going to be sending out those links so you guys can easily click on them. Um, I have seen the Northern Columbia chapter, but not the others. Are they available where? That's pretty much the same answer. Um, is the birders available in Spanish as well? Uh, the films on YouTube are all subtitled. Um, 
So if you click the, the subtitle option in the bottom corner, you can see the subtitled versions. Uh, it was also recently shown for the first time, dubbed in Spanish on Colombian television, on Caracol. Um, I don't believe that's yet available outside of the TV transmission, but I imagine that eventually uh, we will be able to, to have a Spanish uh, dubbed version. Great. Well, that sounds good. Um, this one says, Chris mentioned being able to go birding with guides in the film. How can that be arranged? Well, I know the answer to that. Um, <laughs> we are, are happy to assist with, um, with getting you onto a group or organizing your own private group for your own Audubon Society or uh, other bird club. And I think that, um, you know, 400 guides to choose from. We have lots of options, right? And um, Diego, are most of these guides, are, we really need to get people there to have, let them practice their English and get better. Or, or do you think that that's, um, I'm sure that during your training that English was part of that uh, during the Audubon guide training. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, yes, bilingual, bilingual guides is one of the barriers that Colombia has in order to increase the, you know, the market. So this, uh, this project had uh, a strong component on, on, on English, Spanish. So there are, you know, different levels of knowledge of the, of the people who, who were trained. And some of them certainly uh, already speak English or are able to, to manage English to guide. Uh, for instance, in the case of the Northern Colombia Birding Trail, um, the, the local guides and the local arrangements have enough uh, English Spanish guides, so you, it's covered. And I think for the other three birding trails, we have, uh, you know, a, a great group of people um, who is able to do that. Definitely, this is something to, to move forward and to, to improve. Uh, but one of the things that we are working now with the, with the government of Colombia is precisely that, to increase the, the, the offer on bilingual, uh, bilingual training for them. Uh, but I, at this point, I think um, the whole Burden Trails and, and itineraries offer local, uh, bird, uh, local guides with at least English, Spanish uh, knowledge. Great. So one of the questions I see here is, you, do you need to learn Spanish? And so the answer to that is, no, you don't. I mean, it's nice to, to know some Spanish when you go to a Spanish-speaking country, of course, and it's a great opportunity to practice your Spanish if you're learning it. So, but you don't need it for these types of trips because you have a bilingual guide that um, can do the translation for you. Another one here says, do gray catbirds come to Colombia? <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, would be the answer to that question. Mostly, again, in, of the records are the same islands, San Andres and Providencia, and there are, I believe, a few records from the very north Caribbean coast, probably. Usually in those cases, it's birds that have overshot. They don't migrate to Colombia, you know, to officially, but some turn up every now and again. Sometimes they're there. Like, like me, you know, the few, a few turn up every now and again. They stick around. Okay. Um, you mentioned new burning trails are being developed. What about the infrastructure? Are new burning lodges being built in Colombia? Diego, do you have an answer to that? Yes, and this is the other, the other big issue for the development of Colombia bird watching industry is the lack of uh, ecology for, for birders. The, the, the work that we did with the burden trails, the, not the Northern Colombia burden trail, but the others, include um, an evaluation of the places and, and locations. So the itineraries and the, and, the, and the burden trail is based on those areas and those places that could accommodate uh, clients and, you know, uh, tourism interested in burden. There are few um, ecology specialized on, on bird watchers but uh, there are certainly some improving in the rural capacity for for accommodate you know uh, tourism and uh, tourists in a um, in a in a good way. This is one of the main um, investments areas that the government is discussing and looking at that. Uh, we are a little behind in terms of uh, competitiveness, uh, you know, from Costa Rica or Peru and Ecuador. 
but I think we, the country is going to improve the offer in the next two years. But for now, I think we have some competitive areas and, and you know, lodges that could accommodate people within these burden trades. So they should be pretty comfortable. I know a couple of the places we visited were amazing and not that rustic, but some that were pretty rustic. So it's kind of a mix still. Yes, uh, well, uh, one, of the, one of the main things that the government is doing is precisely improving the quality of services in the rural areas. This was one of the things that we identified back in 2015 when we developed this project in the northern part of Colombia, that this is, other, this is the other area that we need to improve greatly. But, um, you know, the last five years, the things have been improved. And, and I expect that uh, one of the main investments in Colombia after the COVID will be definitely the infrastructure of lodge and experiences in the rural area. Okay. Well, I have one. Gonna, oh, oh, sorry. I'm just going to jump in and say just to keep an eye on time. We may need to, um, we may have just time for two or three more questions before we wrap okay. up. Yep, it looks like I have one here I can combine the question. So what is the security situation these days and is the water okay to drink? Yeah. Um, Go ahead, please, please. I, well, I can take some and then I can kick it over to Diego because I'm sure we both have. The water uh, in all of the Andean cities uh, is fine to drink. Colombia's water mostly comes from the Paramo moorlands uh, around the big cities in the high Andes, which basically act as sponges and filters for fresh water. Uh, on the coast, um, less so. It's it's better to drink bottled water on the coast in the coast regions, but um, nothing particularly. Uh, the security situation um, is vastly, vastly improved. Like in any country, uh, there are still some very remote areas of the country that have their issues, but places that you would not be going as part of any birding tour. The, the, the routes that Diego's talked about, the different birding trails, all have an excellent security situation these days, perfectly safe to visit. And uh, as anyone will tell you who visits Colombia, you'll find the friendliest people in the world here. It's one of those situations where, as is the case across the world, there's a 0.1% making the 99.9% .9 look bad sometimes globally. But actually, Colombia is a country full of incredibly welcoming and friendly people who just are delighted to show off their country to, to visitors. I don't know if Diego has anything to add. No, just to mention that one of the criteria for for selecting the the localities that are part of the burden trails, one of these criteria was security. You know that we signed this peace agreement that incredibly increased the security in the rural areas, um, but we just run these criteria on security. So the areas that are identified within the burden trails are completely safe, and the drinkable water is available in you know all the country so probably not for the tap but uh, in some areas for instance in Bogota you can just drink from the tap but in other areas definitely you can get a bottle of water without a problem or other any other source of drinkable water so no problem with both great Lindsay oh I see we are just about have, having to close here so um, I think we should probably do that and there there are some other questions remaining and we can just we'll answer those I mean now we'll be we'll be able to respond to those Lindsay by writing them back after the webinars closed we can do that yeah it looks like we do have a few questions that we weren't able to get to so we can yes. definitely we can definitely do that yeah, yeah we'll so um, oh sorry go ahead no, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, we will we'll make sure to do that and um, I'll, I'll share those with you, Debbie, as well. Um, so I guess before we wrap up, I'd just like to ask, uh, well, to thank Chris and Diego and also ask, is there any, do you have any final notes or anything you'd like to add, anything that we didn't get to today before we wrap? No, just uh, that we'll hopefully see you in Colombia once all of this blows over. Exactly, we are happy to receive people, uh, we are preparing everything. So, uh, you know, it, the exact second that this pandemic overs and we get the vaccine or everything is smooth, we are more than happy to receive them here and attend and, and, and you know, offer these births. So definitely. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much to both of you today for joining us. 
Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and conclude our presentation. Thank you also to everyone who joined us today for our webinar. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, the webinar has been recorded and so we'll have that link up available. Uh, we'll be sending it out by email and it will also be available on our YouTube channel. Uh, and we'll also be sharing the links that were mentioned earlier, uh, both to the uh, film series so that you can watch the full film, film series if you haven't already, uh, as well as to some of the music that is featured in the film. So uh, we'll be sharing those uh, uh, probably either tomorrow or sometime early next week. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and conclude. Thank you so much to everybody and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks. Bye. Bye.